Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, it's apps that teachers love. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I want to share with you the apps that teachers liked best. So we did a presentation out in western Nebraska, Lori Frederick and I, and we've presented a whole number of apps to teachers and at the end we asked them which ones were the ones you liked best and this is the collection of the top apps that teachers liked. The first one is called TouchCast and TouchCast is a way to do casting from your device and it's considerably different than the rest of the screen casting apps because it has multiple options. The first option is when we create a new one, let's just create a new one right here and this shows you what our studio looks like sideways and it allows you to use your camera either the front facing or the back facing camera and it'll just use what you can see but you can add a whole variety of applications, video applications, into that space. So you can add a web space, a web page, hotspot, or you can see that there are quite a few other things that you can use. So for example, if we decide to add a Google Map, a Google Map will show up. Well, we can enter any location, but in this case I want to use our location. And now we've got the map, and you say add to video, and now you can see that we see the same space but now we've got the map and you can use this map just like you would use on any other Google Maps so you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can move across it so you don't have to stay exactly where you want and you can actually do that live and not just before you start shooting and then what you can do on top of that is add multiple things you can actually move that and you can actually make this full screen and it'll tell you the camera is off, we're only on this, or you can go to half screen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of options of things to add, and the idea is you can use this with kids to create something that looks like a newscast or weather forecast or anything like that. It can be a science show, and to record, all you have to do is press on the record button and go. The great thing about this, and I'm saying that it's great because I actually do think it's great, is that it's limited to five minutes, which forces anybody that uses this to really focus on what do I want to say, how do I say it effectively, how do I make sure that it fits under that five minute uh, rule. And this allows the users really to be playful with what they're doing, but to not make really long movies that then if you're a teacher and you're using this as a product become too long for anybody else to watch or even for you to watch and evaluate if it's an assignment that you want to include. So this one is called TouchCast and many of the teachers created TouchCast right there and on the spot merged two different TouchCasts, created different segments, were very playful with it and saw an immediate application to the classroom. The next one is one we've presented before but I think it's probably the most common app that teachers are using in classroom, this is EduCreations. And in EduCreations, you again get screencasting, but the difference is, in this case, what you get is a whiteboard. And we've seen teachers use it in three different ways. So uh, this is really important because this allows you to do different things depending on your goals. The first thing that we've seen teachers use this is just as a way to present in the class and have students participate in class. They have the whiteboard, they connect the device to a projector, usually wirelessly because that allows them to walk around the classroom. They use the colors, they can draw on it or write and you can do it like this or you can use the text tool and actually write with uh, the keyboard both will work rather easily. You can make the font larger or smaller and you can bring pictures in so there are lots of opportunities to actually engage students and add information and what they do is they use it in the classroom and then if there's an exercise for students the students do the work but at least one of the students shows their solution if it's math or their spelling if you're doing spelling or anything else on 
the whiteboard app, so the teacher takes her iPad, gives it to somebody, and then to one of the students, and then they're solving and everybody else can see it without canting up and coming to the front of the class and without kids having to mill uh, about, you can quickly shift between students and as a teacher then your positioning is very, very different. So this is the first way to do it and what's important to know is you can do it on the spot but you can also pre-prepare those so they're ready to go when you're actually working in the classroom. Now that's one way to use it and you don't actually have to record, you just have to create all the pages you want and you can see Pressing that arrow will actually give you multiple pages. So that's great. A second way to use it is for a teacher to actually prepare in advance a short movie based on what she's doing on the whiteboard. And all you have to do is then press record. And again, you can prepare this in advance or you can do it on the spot. And then you can make, and I think the examples are always math because that's just easy to show, right? I'm doing four, one, two, three, four, plus three, one, two, three, and then we can count all of them together and see that it is seven. Just a simple way to show what you need to do. You can undo an action and of course you can erase or you can open a new page. Once you're done with the lesson, you stop and then if you're done, it'll allow you to save the lesson and share it with others if you want to share it with your students, make it public to the world and that's a fantastic way to do it. And it is important to say that when you log on, it gives you the option to look through lessons that others have shared. So you actually have the opportunity to see what others have done and potentially incorporate it into what you're doing by sending it to kids without you creating it. The last way to use it is probably the best way and most active way, and that is to ask students to create the videos themselves. So after they watch something, or just after class, you say your task is to create one math problem and solve it. Or just create one math problem so one of your friends can solve it. Either way, but then you transfer the responsibility of making the exercise and thinking through a problem to the students, which is probably where you want all of them to be eventually. And the great thing about uh, that, again, is you can use those multiple pages, you can share it electronically or right there on the spot. So this is EduCreations and again, we've seen many, many good things done by teachers. When they, uh, when they look at this, they can see all the potential. The next one, and this is an app that many of the teachers liked and also many of my, um, my undergraduate students liked, and this is Picolage. And you can see that they have templates or you can just tap to create. So you can see that you can pick a template. There are lots of possible templates that can be used. Let's just use something like this. So this is designed for a trip, but you can actually edit any of these things. So this is what a trip. But if you go here, you can actually edit this and say something like, what a lesson, right? And then you can bring in photos to share. So add photos and we will add photos for my camera roll. Let's um, use this one. And this comes in and we can integrate it into the picolage. We can make it larger or smaller. We can put it at an angle. You can see that these are decorations that you can take off so you can erase them. But the idea is you can create a poster that has a digital presence and then share it with everybody else. We can see kids using it. We see teachers use it to present a new concept. And when you want to share it, all you have to do is press on that little button and you can share it on Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. We can post to Picolage, which is most useful with kids because we don't necessarily want them to have a Facebook or a Twitter account, but they can definitely have it there. You can save it to the library, so you save it as a picture and then you can share it just like any other picture you share through email or through a photo stream, or you can directly email it. The next two that I want to present uh, have also something to do with presentation. The first one is Telegami. Kids like it for a variety of reasons, including the fact that the camera isn't actually pointed 
on them. So when you click on create, you get a character, and you can actually change the character. You can see that you can change the direction they're at. You can change their gender, so you can be a woman or a man. You can change skin tone. Um, I can become considerably darker. You can change eye color. That actually works for me. Um, hair color, let's make it, etc. So you can see that you can play with any of this, including clothing, shoes. You know, we can go back to something that looks more like me. Um, not that that's a problem, but um, that'll be a little bit closer. And you create this character. You can change the emotion for this character. Uh, my favorite one is surprised. I do that a lot, so this is good. And then you can bring in back background, so you can get, you can take a picture, you can doodle something freely, or you can take a photo from your library. I will take a photo from a library, right? A desert scene, that changes the background. And then what you can do, once you have all of that set, you can actually record a short presentation. So you can do this. You see, this is record your own voice. This is a desert. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. This is a five second presentation. This and then desert. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. And you see what it does is it creates movement in the, with the mouth of the character. So that's part of this. You can preview it, decide if you want to keep it or not. If you do want to keep it, you can actually share the final product, Facebook, Twitter, email, and you can also save it on the app. And what's important here, again, is students can create their own presentation. They can do something about science, social studies, or anything else. They can bring in pictures, whether they found it on the internet and it's legal for them to use it, or whether they took it themselves and they can provide an explanation. And you as a teacher can actually use that to evaluate what they've learned. They can share it with each other. We can share it with parents. So lots of opportunities to be interactive. It is limited to 30 seconds, at least in the free, sec in the free version. So you want to be cognizant of that. And that means kids also need to have it planned very, very carefully because the time runs out fairly quickly. So this is telegamy. The last one that I want to present is one we've presented before, and that's haiku deck. And teachers love haiku deck because it's a presentation software that is very simple. And the simplicity means that kids or adults can put in a presentation fairly quickly. Very limited options, which means that sooner or later you're going to run into the situation where there's not enough, there are not enough options for you, but if you want kids to create a short presentation in about five to 10 minutes, Haiku Deck is probably a great place to start. You can add your own pictures. You can uh, create text and add it. You can create multiple slides. You can create, create graphs. So you can see that you just roll through to see what's going on. You can see that the text was added and the pictures were added individually. So this one is called Haiku Deck and it's a really quick and uh, easy way to create a presentation. We don't always have to have time to create complicated, uh, time-consuming products and this is a great way out of that. So I shared with you five different apps that the teachers we worked with really found useful and thought they could use immediately in the classroom and we'll hope to share more with you rather soon, so we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.